Well, I'm going to clean some more parts up here so I can get this uh, front clip put together on this uh, Chevy truck here. And I'm going to run a different style front clip, one that's got the four square headlights in the front of it. So anyhow, um, one other thing that I'm going to do is change out this inner fender on this side. This is the driver's side because it's got some pinholes rust in it. So anyway, I'm going to get this stuff cleaned up and then uh, put that truck together. So this here is my hot seat and I'll show you how this thing works. And uh, anyway, it plugs into 110 volts. And anyway, so you can put some diesel in right here and that's the pump right there. There's my dogs running away. <laughs> so anyway, I don't ever turn that burner on until I get some good water going through this thing. And that's a helicopter tip on the end. So anyway, now that the air's bled out of it, is what I'm going to do is turn the burner on. And there's the burner right there. And you can change the temperature, how hot you want the water to burn by the dial right there. I've got the water turned up to about 212 degrees. So anyway, it heats up this coil inside of here and uh, heats your water up. So every time you uh, squeeze the trigger, That's about what it looks like. I'm gonna get to going here. Well, I got the uh, fenders cleaned up a bit here, and anyhow, I'm gonna put this front clip on here this evening. So this is what's looking like. You well, know, here's the radiator support. Well, starting to look like a little Chevrolet Cummins now for sure. Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys a few of the problems that I ran into on this so far. This is a Flexolite fan. Anyway. I've got this cool little controller box here to where you can uh, manually kick on one of the fans or both of the fans or manually shut them off and plus you can run this little thermostat right here inside of the uh, inlet and the radiator and you can get this set this temperature dial right here to where uh, the fans will automatically kick on or off at a desired temperature so anyway um, I've got plenty of room to do this. I was almost, I could almost get away with running the uh, manual fan blade in there the, with the clutch on there and it fits and everything really nice but the only thing is, is the fan shroud is offset on the Chevrolet um, compared to the Cummins. So the next thing is I actually uh, threw this temporary belt on there that I do have. I'm going to be replacing this belt because it's no good. I put it on there to make sure that uh, the belt's not going to roll off this new water pump because this new water pump's a different style. And uh, I'll show you guys here at the very last of this uh, video what the difference is. So that's the other thing. Hopefully it all works out good with this water pump. I won't find out until I fire this thing over and I still got quite a bit more work before that happens. So anyway, I've actually got plenty of room on the front side of the motor. Like I said, if I really wanted to, I could run that uh, manual fan and uh, make a fan shroud, but I'm not going to go to all that headache whenever I get that fancy electric fan set up. The next issue I ran into, this truck has a hydro boost brake system and uh, this uh, power steering pump is not set up for a hydro boost brake system. So as what the hydro boost brake system does is uh, instead of having a vacuum booster back there, behind the master cylinder it's actually uh, pressure off your power steering pump that runs the brakes instead of vacuum. Diesels do not put off vacuum. So on diesels is what they have to run the vacuum is they have these vacuum pumps and all diesels are different. The uh, 6.2 diesel has one that looks like a distributor and then uh, this in here has a vacuum pump here and then one on the bottom. The problem is with that is it's not enough vacuum to run brakes. So they come out with the uh, fancy hydro boost brake system on the diesels. 
So anyhow, is all I got to do to make this work is pull this housing off this power steering pump and get one more return line into the side of this pump. So I'll pull this housing off and embrace a uh, steel line that goes into the side of this housing and then I'll have my uh, second return for this pump. Because you got to have one pressure side, and that's on the back side, one pressure and two returns. So anyway, that's kind of what this, uh, the other problem I ran into was here. Other than that, everything's going pretty smooth and uh, hopefully here in a couple of days this thing's going to be uh, melting the tires off of it. So I figured I'd give you guys an update. Tomorrow I'm going to get this uh, housing off here and fix that issue and then uh, start with the wiring and stuff. And I should have this truck done here for a long or I still got one cross member to make which that's going to be an easy fix. And uh, drive shafts. I still got to deal with the drive shafts and fuel lines and a couple other small little things like heater, heater hoses and uh, like I said that homemade wiring harness which is not very many wires it takes to run a Cummins but I want the uh, temperature gauges and all that good stuff to work so anyhow that's what it's looking like guys if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and uh, you'll get to hear this uh, Chevrolet Cummins run and watch this baby smoke the tires here before long well I wanted to make a little video over the uh, water pumps and this is the new Duralast AutoZone water pump that I went and picked up and uh, the thing is with the water pumps on these uh, Cummins diesels there's no core charge so I actually have my old water pump to show you the difference um, let me start with this old one here first and it, I kinda like doing reviews on this stuff it's uh, just something neat to look at as you can see right here on this bottom side this is called a weep hole and uh, this weep hole is what it does whenever the pump goes bad it actually sits on the motor like this right here so whenever the pump goes bad the antifreeze will come out of this little weep hole right here and start running down the front of your motor it's basically like a uh, tattletale and it'll, it'll let you know when your uh, water pumps bad here's the other thing this uh, this pulley right here has a groove in it right here for the belt to ride on and uh, I'm sure that help helps the uh, the uh, belt track in the uh, on the proper spot on this pump the other thing is is the blades this has a nice tall blade to it and I'm sure that this is the uh, stock water pump that came on this motor when it was new because <clears throat> it's so out of date but it was a good pump there was nothing wrong with this pump I just uh, decided to put a new one on it since I had the motor this far apart as you can see the blade looks really nice for the most part everything looks pretty good other than just being a little ugly on the outside here's the new water pump um, it has no groove in it for the belt to track which I find that just a little bit awkward and uh, we went over probably about six or seven different water pumps and uh, all the water pumps are the same up to like 2002 on these water pumps so anyway um, here's the weep hole right here it actually has a port and the metals notched right here so instead of the weep hole being underneath it actually is going to run out from the uh, bottom of the block which I don't think I like that too much and here's the other thing fin on the back of it if you remember this one right here the cooling fin is much bigger this one here it's much smaller and plus it has this beveled uh, piece of metal on it so it's, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, how efficient this water pump is to me it seems like this is not a high volume water pump and anything this would be the high volume pump because of uh, how big the fins are so anyway I figured I'd show you guys me and uh, me and need more horsepower was, talk, was uh, talking about this earlier and I told him I'd get him a video and show him the difference he uh, he was quite intrigued by the uh, by the differences I was explaining to him as well and of course there's an o-ring that goes right here